You know, my friends, life isn't always easy. There are certain times in life when we struggle. There are times where getting by just isn't as easy as it should be. And in some cases, the best thing to do might be to go to therapy. But sometimes our therapist is on vacation, and so here we have animations! Of course! The best thing for mental health besides mental health treatment. Getting life advice from strangers on the internet. Hi, friends. Today, we're gonna be watching some animations that might just make you a little bit more emotionally intelligent. I picked a few animations that I've wanted to watch for a really long time, and I wanted to save it to do them all together because these are animations that I think we can genuinely learn from. And I really enjoy these kinds of topics. I think if you don't ever pay attention to these topics of mental health, you really should, because this stuff applies to every single human being on Earth. And so I'm really excited to do this video. And we have two different animators picked out. You know the rules before we get started. If you enjoy these videos, you need to check out the original creators. Their links will be in the description. Ice cream sandwich upside the down. And to start it off, we are going to do a sequel to a video that we already checked out about ADHD. For those of you who don't know, I have severe wow. ADHD. It is the bane of my existence and the cause of 80% of my problems in life. But it also makes me the person who I am. So if you think I'm funny or entertaining to listen to, I can thank my ADD for that, as tough as it is. ADHD? But medicated. We watched Ice Cream Sanders' video on ADHD, and then he talked about the ADHD but medicated video, and I really wanted to watch that. But he said it was a little bit more serious. So I was like, let's save it for a special video. And here we are. This is the special video. Cream sandwich, ADHD, but medicated. Let's go. Three, two, one, go. Tylko jedno w głowie mam Hey, how you doing? So, before we start, I just want to say that. Re just really quick, you should know. Okay, just really quick. All right. It's good for you to know that what I'm gonna say in this video is not to deter you or convince you of ADHD medication. This is just my experience, of which started out really good, but then quickly declined into stinky, icky bad. So in the last Aww. video, I figured out that I had ADHD because I had symptoms. Symptoms such as often has trouble holding attention on tasks, often does not seem to listen when spoken to yep. correctly, or is often easily distracted, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. So what was the solution? Drug. In America, <laughs> medication doesn't come cheap, so this wasn't like a just whatever decision. This sprouted from some real need. And just in case anyone out there doesn't know what ADHD is, I know most people do, but just for the few who don't, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. It comes from a lack of dopamine sensitivity in the brain. Dopamine is the neurochemical that allows us to focus easily and pay attention to something and want to work on something and give us the motivation to complete a difficult task. When we aren't getting enough of that or when we aren't sensitive enough to it, people with ADHD, it makes it very hard hard to stay productive and stay focused and pay attention to things that are hard to pay attention to for long periods of time. Basically, homework, school work, work work. And so that is where most of the struggles come from. The surprise of no one, ADHD brain isn't very productive. My thoughts either do not complete or just overlap with one another. And that's very annoying. It's a lot of chaos and it can be really frustrating when I'm trying to focus. Hey guys, what is two plus two? I don't know, probably two? I think it could be what? four. Who even made math? Yeah, it's probably what? just another two. There's, There's two, already two twos in there. Probably another two, I bet. When useful to know? Like, what am I gonna do life? with my like, life anyway? Like, like, what will the, the future hold? Just, what just guys, just work together! You can do it! Most people's brains, they have five people working together. But for ADHD people's brains, they got five people who don't even realize the other people are there. It's just a whirlwind of thoughts. As I'm talking in videos, when I am talking in videos, I'll be explaining or describing something, and then part of my brain will be like thinking of something completely different. It's absurd. Can't my whole brain just go towards the thing I want to think about? Apparently that's too hard to do. Feels bad. Well, the future, the what is, what is the future that I need to worry guys. about? What do you imagine it sounds like when we play eight different trumpets randomly at the oh, same no. time? Well, I wonder what we can find out. 
This happens when I'm talking to other people and I could like forget their name. It happened in school and work and I'm sure it's a big reason as to why I had to retake classes in high school. And honestly, I just want my hands on the wheel for once. And I was told that meds could be a way to achieve that. Have you guys gotten any work done at all? Where's the guy in charge here? Oh my god. Uh, yep. There's tons of medications to choose from. You got Adderall, Vyvanse, Ritalin, Concerta, and many others. For my first medication, I used Adderall. Wow, okay. Yeah, I guess we're gonna get into this. Yeah, I'll let Mr. Andy here tell us more about his uh, story and, and whatnot. And I will kind of decide as we go, I think, how much I want to divulge about my situation. But basically, for a bit of backstory, the medication for ADHD is typically a stimulant medication. It stimulates your brain to produce more dopamine so that you have the normal dopamine levels of a normal person. At least that's the goal of it. It has some side effects. It's not perfect. It doesn't do its job perfectly, but it can help a lot of people. So we're going to hear all about it. For my first medication, I used Adderall. We started out really low, about five milligrams of Adderall. So what does Adderall feel like? It takes a little bit to kick in, but when it does, I gain this strange ability, just the ability to be able to. So you see a lot of my <laughs> unmedicated days goes like this. I will think of a thing to do, task A, but then my brain is like, Yo, wait, there's this other thing you should do first because it's probably gonna take like no time at all. And then that happens yep. a couple of times. And then I start on the least important task, yep. get like halfway through it, take a break, forget about all of the other tasks and then get distracted by anything else within my field of view, which if I'm online is infinity. Yep. Then the day is done and I've made a laughably small amount of progress. When Adderall was introduced into my system, I was like, I should do task A. And then I did task A. Crazy. The loop was gone. There was no sensation. It was just ability. Yeah, it's true. That's how it goes. Like there are times when you can be unmedicated with ADHD and take really good care of your mind and body and then you can focus decently well. But for people with ADHD, like, yeah, the feeling of having the medication that kind of supplies you with that like kind of normal amount of dopamine. It's like being able to just focus on whatever's happening in front of you that you want to focus on. That is a foreign feeling. It's the first time like in your life as an ADHD person that you'll feel that kind of thing. And I want to say before I get any further with this, I'm not currently on ADHD medication and I don't think everyone needs to take it. I think there are negative yeah. side effects. I think there's also benefits to it, but it depends on the person. And so by no means when I talk about this, am I like telling you that that's the route you should take? I'm not saying that. So the meds were good for a while until they weren't for good reason. But firstly, I'd like to thank you for willingly sitting down to listen to my sponsor. Now you've never this sly dog. By the way, Cameron's here again, by the way. Hello, everybody. That ice cream sandwich is a dirty dog. <laughs> you know. I legally cannot include his advertisement in this video, so we gotta skip it, unfortunately. I'm sure it's great. I'm sure his sponsored segments are great, but I literally am not allowed to put another person's ad in my video. So Adderall was good for a while until I started to realize that it wasn't doing what I wanted it to. I was able to do things, but I started to notice that it was only touchable and physical tasks. Like one day, oh. I took my Adderall, started to get to work, and then I realized that I was just vacuuming, doing <laughs> dishes, and cleaning up other general messes yeah. around the house because I could physically fix that stuff. But if I needed to sit and think about things, it was really hard. See, the ability to do a thing was gained, but I never got the ability to focus. And that was the core <laughs> of my problem. So out goes the Adderall. That's really interesting. I think for people with ADHD, physical jobs are really good. And I think it requires like less dopamine. Like I think it's easier to focus on physical tasks that you have to actually use your body to do in terms of like things that you don't want to do, right? In terms of tasks that are difficult that you don't want to do, it's easier to focus on physical things like vacuuming than studying a book that isn't moving, right? Right? So that's probably part of why Andy was able to do physical things, but not focus on other things. And of course, everyone's experience is a little bit different, so. So I talked to a friend who also has ADHD about this problem. After some chatting, he mentioned he was taking Vyvanse, which is supposed to work differently than other meds for ADHD. It's a slower burn, and that can help in different ways for different people. Specifically for him, it helps him a lot with focus, which is what I wanted. Yeah, Adderall is great, but also you're effectively taking it. Huh. 
You might want to talk to your psych about Vyvanse if you're looking for something more mellow. Considering my goals and my general aversion to that seemed like a good idea. So I did bring up the idea of Vyvanse to my psych and we decided to give it a go. Vyvanse felt way different than Adderall. When I took it, there was absolutely more focus. Oh. Like, way too much focus. So it comes around the first day of me trying out my new medication. It takes about an hour to kick in. So when I first tried it, nothing happened for a while, but then it hit. And when it did, I was watching a show about space flight and it became very easy to follow along. Instead of consuming huh. multiple forms of media at once, I was keenly aware and focused on this space documentary. That's actually a really interesting thing that I find with ADHD. And I guess this is a piece of advice I have for just anyone in general. If you find that you have to consume multiple pieces of media at the same time, I am guilty of doing this. 100% I'm guilty of doing this. You might be overstimulating yourself, you know? If you need like two pieces of entertainment, like music while playing a video game, video while playing a video game, oh, you know, you always need music playing, you always need something playing. If you find that you sometimes struggle to focus, avoiding doing all of that technological multitasking can help you focus a little bit better. Because when you're working, it's like you can't do all the other fun stuff, you know? Your brain can't take that, that spot. But yeah, that's definitely a common trait of people with ADHD. And I, I definitely do it all the time. I am like fully, I'm fully guilty of, of doing that as well. I was keenly aware and focused on this space documentary, but that focus plus curiosity about space flight led me into learning and researching the science of rocket flight and orbital mechanics. Cool. But that's not what I needed to do for the day. Uh, I was so enthralled with the information that by the time the medication wore off, the day was over and I did no work. I figured out the problem was I was able to work with incredible focus. I just needed to do the right task when the medication began its effect. Yeah. Easy. I yeah. thought this was great. How foolish of me. If I'm not doing what I need to be doing while the meds are focusing me on the wrong thing, then it's not working. I would wake up, I'd take a pill, be distracted, then be locked into that thing I was distracted on for the whole day. So I had days that were crazy productive or days that were totally shot. Oh uh, yeah, but really the medication isn't going to do the work for you, you know? Listen, I have as much empathy for people with ADHD and really crippling ADHD as anyone, honestly. It's been a huge, 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 hard, hard, hard battle for my entire life. But you can't rely on medication to do your work. You need to will yourself into it as well. It can only do so much. So yeah, making sure that you are doing your productive task by the time the medication kicks in, like that is essential. That's extremely important. You know, you can't just hope that like the medication, like the medication isn't going to make the decision to work for you. Because yeah, stuff like this can happen. If you decide you want to be distracted and you don't want to work, you can use that excellent focus on, yeah, just unproductive things as well. But that I to me I think that's really bad because then if you're doing that then working is just going to get harder after that. If you're using your focus moments for like things that don't require focus or whatever, I think it only makes your actual work harder to do when you have to try and focus on it. So I had days that were crazy productive or days that were totally shot. It was all just a gamble. It felt like I was so close to getting rid of my distractibility, so I kept convincing myself that it was just a matter of getting my habits right. Then some weird stuff started to happen. One day I take my beds and I'm working on one of many things I'm not supposed to be working on. And then I started to feel out of breath. I immediately think it's So I go to do tests, talk to doctors, but it doesn't show up. Did you take a test? Yeah. Is it never? <laughs> no. So I'm not sure what this is. The feeling was like <laughs> if I had just stopped jogging, but constantly. I had a feeling wow. that it was the meds that were causing this problem. But I feel like I was so desperate to have the medications work that I was in denial that it was the meds that were causing the problem. So I just kept taking it. And then I did something really stupid. I was supposed to have a conversation with my psych in the future, and I could have just contacted him sooner and talked about these symptoms. But then I waited until I got really bad. I was having headaches. I could hardly sleep. One day I couldn't wait anymore. The symptoms got really bad. And I tried to contact him, but he was out of town and unreachable by this point. And so I did a really bad thing that you are never supposed to do. Do not do this ever. 
I stop taking the meds. Just to clarify, what he means by that is just stopping medication all of a sudden without your doctor's approval. That's what he's talking about. He's not saying you should never stop taking any medication ever. That's just, just, just to make sure everyone is clear. Yeah, those are some rough side effects, and I'm not familiar with things quite like that, but I can say it sounds like that's kind of like a cardiovascular issue where like his heart was probably working too hard because of the stimulant medication. And so in order to counteract that risk and have a better chance of not having those side effects, you really need to make sure you're taking care of your body in all other ways. Like you need to make sure that you're exercising, you know, do some running, biking, whatever. Just some cardiovascular exercise and, you know, make sure you're eating well and sleeping well. Because yeah, if your body's already stressed out and not working properly, then a medication like that is going to potentially cause a lot of problems. And also he mentioned the struggling to sleep. That is definitely a real thing that you definitely need to be aware of because sleep is so important. Pretty much all ADHD medications make it a little bit harder to sleep, so you gotta be really careful. And I'm very thankful that I had no adverse reactions to this, but for me, it worked out. And after a couple of days of not taking the meds, I was fine. So that's my experience with ADHD medication. I'm off meds now, and I'm all good, but now I'm kind of back to square one. I think the moral did- Whoa, God. I'm gonna drop my phone. Bruh. I think the moral of the story <laughs> here is do not be tunnel visioned on results like me. If you're having a bad experience with medication, talk to your medical professional. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to unsubscribe. Wait. All right, that was a really good video. Yeah, I guess all I will say beyond what I've already said is that yes, I at one point was taking ADHD medication. I currently am not because I do think if you can manage it by having a really good diet and exercising and taking care of your body in other ways, I think that's the healthier option, but that it's really, really hard to do. And if you just can't manage it any other way, like medication, I, I have no problem with it. I personally try to avoid it when I can, and so currently I'm avoiding it and doing mostly okay. <laughs> Make sure you are subscribed to Ice Cream Sandwich. His link is in the description. I thought that was a really good video. It's a very, very open and honest take on ADHD, and I think it, he describes it pretty accurately. Next up, we are going to check out an animator that we have not checked out on this channel before, but I really was interested in this video by Cybardano. Social media is I mean, I don't know if it's ruining my life, but I think social media is kind of bad for us. <laughs> I really think this is gonna be a great video, and I, I'm pretty sure we can learn from this video. This video might honestly be encouraging for me because I struggle with social media addiction severely. That's part of the ADD, of course. So let's check it out. I think this will be a lot of fun, guys. So strap in. Robert Eddie K, Cypher Den. Three, two, one. On average, people spend about 3 hours and 43 minutes on their phone on a daily basis. Oh, I'm way more. You what?! And most of that time is spent on a thing we call social media. And you know what's even crazier? That's just the screen time on your phone. So between scrolling through <laughs> hours of TikToks that you barely remember to binging the next Netflix show, that True. leaves us with an average of seven hours of daily screen time. Which is kind of concerning, because if you think about it, spending seven hours of screen time on the daily for a year is equivalent to three whole months. And doing what? Watching your quote-unquote friends' stories that you haven't even seen, hung out with, or even talked to in the last three plus years? No fam, we're out here watching that YouTube YouTube. But no, no, no. Uh, yeah, no, I feel very bad about the amount of screen time I do. Partially, it's my job. Part of me does kind of wish that there was a way that my job couldn't involve screens. Like, I love what I do. I wish it didn't involve me being on my computer all the time. Because, yeah, guys, my screen time is gross. My screen time on my phone is so bad. I seriously watch as much YouTube as anyone. Like, I, I watch so much YouTube, you guys. I'm seriously about this life. If you check your phone right now, what's your current screen time usage? Mine was an average of six hours and 43 minutes. Oh no, my, my, my flashlight was on in my pocket. Okay, so I've been with Cameron like all day. So today it's like the lowest it ever is. It's three hours and 41 minutes. 
But since I've been sick, you guys, I've been in bed pretty much like all day. And so a few days ago, when I was sick in bed all day, 15 hours. That is absurd. Now, the difference there is that I'm not around people on those days. You know, I live by myself. I work by myself. If I am with other people throughout the day, I can stay off my phone and it's awesome and I like that. But yeah, it's definitely at its worst when I'm just by myself. And it really made me question, if I quit social media right now, what am I really missing out on? And before you say anything, no, I'm not quitting YouTube. <laughs> so sit back down and listen. I've always given myself the excuse that I can never quit because I need to do research. I need to be up to date on what's relevant, the newest trends, news, memes, online drama, which new baddie Pete Davidson's dating. <clears throat> <laughs> Anyways, one day I realized that my attention span was so garbage that it started to get a little concerning. I was struggling to do basic tasks, just constantly zoning out and falling into the rabbit hole of either YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, yeah. Uber Eats, switching between Uber apps Eats. and doom scrolling my- Dude, just the <laughs> Uber Eats rabbit hole, you know? I'll just spend hours on that thing, just ordering food and then I'm just addicted to scrolling on Uber Eats. Doom scrolling on Uber Eats. Dude, that, that should be a song. That should be like an emo song. <laughs> Doom scrolling on Uber Eats. <laughs> also, guys, I know this video is a little bit different. Do you like these slightly more serious animation reactions? If you want me to do more videos like this, let's get this video to 15,000 likes. And if you can do that, then I'll do another video like this. Cool. The attention span of a goldfish is about nine seconds long, while humans are now averaging at about 8.25 seconds. Nice. We're literally getting our <laughs> handed to us by goldfishes. How are we even falling behind goldfishes? Like, look at them. Yeah. Okay, this is a little embarrassing, but I might or might not have almost flooded my apartment because I turned on the faucet, blanked out, and walked away. In my defense, I was watching a really good K-drama, but I couldn't even finish a three-step task. Let's be real, quitting social media is easier said than done. All right, be honest. How many times have you deleted social media telling yourself this is it. This is the final time. And when you do, you get that itch. That itch to check if anyone messaged you. Just one quick look. So you download the app again, and you're back to square one as if these apps have you in a chokehold. Yeah, yeah, kind of. Have you have you ever done that? Have you like deleted social media to like? Yeah, sometimes, but then I'm you know, a very weak man and I go right back, unfortunately. After like deleting the app though? Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, I, I typically don't delete the apps because it's like, I don't know, it's like part of my job, even though like I don't think social media benefits me in any way whatsoever. But like, I never delete it, I'll, I'll limit my screen screen time, so I'll put like password blocks on it so that I can't be on it. But yeah, deleting the whole app, I don't typically do that. So I quit for 30 days plus. So on January 1st, 2023, I decided new year, no new me, because honestly, the return policy to send me back into the room might be a little overdue. So I'm just gonna try to fix myself little by little. We'll, we'll see what happens. So how did I quit for 30 days plus? I knew for a fact that I always use my phone first thing when I wake up. Scrolling for an hour before I even get out of bed. Oof. Putting my phone across the room made it impossible to stay in bed. One habit I have after waking up is making myself a hot cup of coffee. So instead of being on my phone while drinking my coffee, I decided I'm gonna read these books I told myself I was gonna read but never did because I never had the time to. So far in those 30 days plus, I've read about three books, which is wow. an improvement since I've only read like half a book last year. I never was, I've never been a morning reader in my life. I used to read a lot, but it was only at night. Were you ever a reader? Not much, honestly. Oh, this guy doesn't read books, come on. Not, been, not unless it's super nerdy. Your parents didn't force you to read chapter books, Cameron? Nah, they did, but it didn't work out very well. Wow. Okay, well, to tell my readers out there, yeah, that's something that I've battled personally as well where it's like stopping myself from being on my phone in bed versus reading in bed. Like reading is so much better for your brain. But guys, I'm not good. This is something I genuinely struggle with a lot. So this is a super relatable issue for me. And it goes hand in hand with the ADHD. It's kind of funny how like social media addiction and ADHD are just like one in the same. Like they both make each other worse. The first week was the hardest. Going on my phone and clicking on social media felt like a habit that was just on autopilot. No thoughts behind it just click for instant gratification. Yep. I yep. caught myself trying to click on apps that I just deleted, so instead I downloaded different apps. 
I downloaded motivational apps and placed those where my social media apps used to be, just to remind myself why I'm doing this in the first place. I also downloaded a journaling app, so instead of screaming into the void of Twitter, I just journaled my thoughts. I also got an app called Freedom, which blocks apps on websites that are distracting you from your phone and computer. To quit, I had to find out what my reason was to be on social media in the first place. Was it work? Was it curiosity? Was it loneliness, boredom, the constant need to consume content? Yes, all of those things. The great unknown, FOMO, also known as the fear of massive orcas. What? what? You can't really be afraid of missing out on things if you don't even know what you're quote unquote missing out on. Like, you can't really even be jealous of things you don't even know exist. True. Or does it just come down to seeing likes and comments just to feel good about myself? To feel like I belong. Why do you think most social media apps have either taken off or never have a dislike button? Because it feels bad to get a dislike. These apps get you to come back time and time again by giving you rewards like new followers, right. likes, comments, and never-ending content. Yeah, yeah, it's true. This is so true. And I know everyone probably knows this already, but it's very important to remember that these social media apps are designed to keep you on them as long as possible. They are designed in every single way. They are designed with the sole intention of keeping you on them as long as possible they don't care if that's bad for you they don't care if that's unhealthy they are designed to be as addictive as possible so keep that in mind because it's always trying to trick you to stay on it for longer social media apps are there to make you feel good so you can spend more time on them you really think they haven't introduced a dislike button for your own benefit yeah i highly doubt that they're out there hiring the top researchers to study the human brain and behaviors to get you to stay on social media longer they don't care about you, they don't care about me, they just want your time. And I don't know if you've realized, but time is one of the most valuable things in life that you can never get back. How many projects or hobbies have you told yourself you don't have the time for? How many times have you felt like you haven't done enough in life? How many times in life have you felt like you're falling behind because you're comparing yourself to your friend's social media achievements? Comparing yourself to other people online, it is so easy to get caught up in doing that and it is so not healthy. I find myself doing this. I'm very weird in that like I'm a major perfectionist for myself. That's part of why I spend so much time editing my videos. I just hold myself to like the highest standard I possibly can and I try to hold myself to impossible standards and that's a big problem I have and when I go on social media and I see people who are the best at any given thing I compare myself to them in that one given thing for example I see like a singer who's like world famous I'm like oh I'm not as good at, as at singing as that person or I see a person who kickboxes who's really really good and is a full-time kickboxer and I'm like oh they're a better kickboxer than me it's like so ridiculous right because we're all our own individual interesting people and so comparing ourselves to, yeah, people's highlight reels, as they say on social media, is really, really unhealthy. And you need to make sure that you are careful not to do that. Pros and cons of quitting social media. Let's start with the cons. Okay, I okay. have no idea what my friends are talking about. I have little to no clue what new random sound bites people are sounding off to. Bombastic side eye. Criminal offensive side eye. It definitely makes me feel like I'm out of the loop, like I'm an outcast that doesn't understand the jokes. I literally had to search up what Riz meant, and yep. honestly, I could have probably gone my whole life without knowing. Yep. The friends you make along the way. Social media did help me when it came to making friends, because I'm no social butterfly. So without social media... No new friends, no new friends, no new friends. Oh no. Oh no. The, the Drake reference. Very appropriate Drake reference. I respect it. I can completely relate to that. I am not someone who goes on TikTok personally. I don't really like it. I don't really like how it's set up. I don't really like those types of videos too much. But all of these like viral sounds that happen, it's like I am so not in on these jokes. So yeah, I'd say, I'd say that's one of the biggest issues with that. But then also, yeah, if there are people who you primarily keep up with and keep in contact with through social media, it can, it can make friendships slightly harder when you are off of it. You expect me to go out there and talk to strangers? Like, no thank you, I'm not a psychopath. Memories. 
This is a little personal, but I kept my Facebook for the longest time because I would reread messages from my grandma and my uncle before they decided that they were just going to peace out of this planet with no invites. Like, how rude. Okay. Before I deleted my Facebook, I screenshotted everything and downloaded the messages. But at the same time, I always feel like I might have missed something, <sighs> which sucks. That got really deep out of nowhere. Wow, that was deep. I, hey, I, I feel that. I feel that. I think keeping those accounts is fine because that's one thing I actually really regret about Facebook is I got to one age, probably when I was like 17 or 18 and I wanted to be cool and I hated all the pictures of me at 12 and 13. So I went and untagged myself from them and deleted all of them. And now I would love to be able to go back and look at those photos. So yeah, I think it's important to like make sure you don't accidentally get rid of memories that you'll like eventually wish you could see. Anyways, the pros. My self-esteem is somehow higher. I like to pretend Makes that sense. I don't give a about what other people think, especially strangers. But since diving into the world of social media, I've overanalyzed filters, captions, and somehow my face. Am I pretty enough? Interesting enough? Oh, someone called me fat. But they might be right because it's more than one person that said so. And this was a time that I was literally just skin and bones. I could literally see my ribs, but those comments still got to me. Did I start skipping meals Man. because some idiots online thought I was a little chonky? I'm not proud, but yeah, I did. But after quitting social media, I don't really have that pressure. Wow. Yeah, that is that is a super serious topic. I can't relate to it on that level, I don't think. But I I did develop certain physical insecurities because of reading YouTube comments. I know that she doesn't have the exact same experience as the average person using social media because she has a following and gets more interactions from random people that she doesn't know. And so she's also more likely to get random, <laughs> absurd, rude, awful comments. And yeah, I'm definitely the same way. There are certain things that I went my whole life without being insecure about. And then after being on YouTube for a few years in like 2016, 2017, there were certain things about myself that I didn't like as much. I I've gotten way, way, way better than I used to be. But that's a tough thing about social media and being a public influencer, whatever, is that you are just open to just receiving whatever comments. And the rudest people in the world can just decide to, to write on your stuff. I I typically don't see most negative comments now. I have really good like filters and whatnot, and I don't really get that many in general, so it's fine and it doesn't bother me like it used to. But for people who are just getting into social media, I don't know, it can be really dangerous, guys. And you really need to watch out for things like that. I could go out looking like a goblin and be fine, because no one's going to come up to me going, Hey, you look fat and ugly and you suck. And if they did, bite their leg off. Yeah. Then what? Oh, sorry. Bite both their legs off so they can gravel for your forgiveness. Yeah, that, that makes sense. My attention span has also improved. I can just sit there and body the tasks that I need to do. I've gotten so much work done in the last 30 days that I can actually say that I'm proud of myself. Being more present with people I spend time with. Since I'm not always updated on my friends and family's daily activities or what they had for lunch, I have no idea what they're doing. So when I do see them, I feel like I'm more present and in the moment. I'm there instead of posting about being there. Yeah, I personally am really bad about like, I never take pictures when I do things with people. So like my social media looks really boring because it's just me at home all the time. But it's like, I'm just not the type to like post about being places. But I feel like I'm a bad influencer for that reason. It's like, I feel like I don't share as much as I should because I just assume people don't care, which is a really, really bad way of thinking. But over the years, my relationship with social media has just gotten really, really weird. And yeah, that's just a bit of uh, honesty for y'all. Real friends. I really thought about this, but does commenting and liking on someone's post really make you their friend when really that's your only interaction with them? Would they notice if you disappeared off the face of the planet? Would they even care? Less screen time and more time to do other things. Since quitting, I started a couple of projects that I never had the time to do. Turns out I've always had the time for them, but I was just focused on the wrong thing. Thinking for myself. Social media has a problem with crowd mentality. Yep. How many of you have decided that Velma is the worst animated show ever right, without right. having even watched the show? 
in fairness, probably right. But I wouldn't know because I never watched it. Yes, which is exactly. Kind of to the amazing artists that worked on it because I never really gave it a chance. That is so true. Social media hive mind mentality. It's such a popular thing because if people agree with each other, they feel like they have friends and they have company. And so, so much negativity can just spiral out of control from things like that. It just becomes like fun to every, like everyone, let's make fun of this one thing because it's fun. Meanwhile, like a lot of the time that thing getting made fun of, like there's like honest, good, hardworking, kind people behind it. And it's just unfairly being just destroyed by the public because for some reason, like publicly making fun of things together, like makes people feel less alone. Just be careful with stuff like that, homies. Try not to just be a person who spews negativity. Even if there's like someone deserves it or whatever, it's like the world will take care of it. Like, I just think it's not healthy to participate in like these like negative feedback loop, like angry mobs on the internet. It's just not good for your own mental health. The truth is we're always consuming other people's opinions on shows, on food, and heck, even reactions of reactions. Yeah. And before you can even come up with an opinion on your own, you've already watched someone's opinion and all you can say is true. I'm somehow happier. Before quitting, I noticed that TikTok was sending me videos that kind of made me depressed. I could be watching a funny dog video, and next thing I know, I'm suggested a video telling me that I'm having an existential crisis, or telling me that I have childhood trauma that I didn't even know I had. Like, I know I'm sad sometimes, True. but I also don't need some teenager telling me that I have childhood trauma when I was having a perfectly fine day. I so agree with that. Oh my gosh. I so agree with that. So there's certain mental health content out there that's just like, 10 signs you might have this severe disorder. Oh, sometimes you're not happy. Oh, sometimes you're tired. Sometimes you overthink. It's like there's some mental health content out there that is so toxic that it convinces people that they have disorders that they may not have or makes people think they have problems that they might not have. And I just think stuff like that is just so bad. It is so, so bad for people. And I don't know, TikTok just has a way of sending you videos, swaying what you believe and sometimes even how you feel. For me, it's terrifying that an algorithm can mold you into something you're not, or the fact that an algorithm even has the power to make you feel a certain type of way. With that social media, I did notice that I'm significantly happier. And maybe it's because I stopped looking for validation from strangers online. Or the fact that I'm now getting constantly told by the algorithm that I have like 300 mental disorders. Yeah. Or the constant videos telling you how the world's gonna end. Like, I know. Just stop <laughs> reminding me. Huh. Well, that was quite the ending. I really liked that video because it didn't it didn't necessarily tell people like, hey, social media is 100% bad. You should never use it. But I think this information is, is kind of important because a lot of people, we are so used to just social media being a part of our lives that we forget that when you use it too much, it can be very bad for your mental health and your happiness. I totally really like that video and I definitely encourage anyone who thinks that they might be someone who uses social media too much, look into setting limits for yourself and being mindful of not overdoing it so that you can be the happiest and healthiest person you can be. And people, check out Cypher Den's channel. This video was super good. It clearly took a lot of work, so make sure you check them out. Here's Ice Cream Sandwich's link as well because we checked him out. Here is the last animation reaction we did. Make sure you check it out out if you have not seen it or here's a video that YouTube thinks you will like. Are they right? You let me know. Have a good day, homie. Peace.